I preached some years ago, but it's amazing. I, I, I remember hearing pastors say it. I remember hearing bishops say it, that our lives go in cycles. And so this one has come back up again. And uh, for those of the leadership who are on the 5 a.m. call, it was like I was telling you this morning, we have to do a self-check, a self-evaluation. We have to make sure that we're bearing fruit for the kingdom. Amen. Amen. So if you would, turn to your Bibles to Mark 11. And we're going to start with, verses, with verse 12. And we're going to go to 17. And Lord willing, and I believe Pastor will be pleased, we'll have a second part to this as well. Because we're focusing on trees. You know, Merry Christmas to everyone. And uh, usually people like to put up Christmas trees or some type of decoration. But that tree seems to take the most time, energy, and effort. Yes. And sometimes that tree can take you all day long. And sometimes the fact that the tree is going to take so long, you don't put up the tree. <laughs> but that's how God brought this message back to me about, Lord, help me to be more than just a pretty tree. There's a lot of pretty trees around. Mm -hmm. But in this scripture, we're going to talk about how you need to just be more than just look good mm -hmm. in the kingdom. Yes, Lord. We can all look good. But is it of any substance? Amen. Is it any quality there? And quantity. All right. So let's look at this picture. I was actually trying to find the picture that was on Facebook of this man. He was so grungy looking. He was scary looking, really. And then it was this little girl standing beside him, kind of like this picture. But when you turned them around, the man had a bouquet of flowers behind his back, and the little girl had an axe. So this picture is kind of like that picture that you see the spike-haired individual that people would prejudge and probably say he doesn't even know Jesus. He has a flower in his hand trying to give it to the little girl that if you notice at the bottom, she has a little demon tail coming out. So, you know, and he has a halo over his head. Yeah. So, mm, so have you ever heard that saying, don't judge a book by its cover? Yes, yes. Yeah, that, that's a good one right there. <laughs> it's like, we have to be careful. That's right, baby. That's right. We have to be careful about how we prejudge people based upon their appearance. Amen. 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 And I like this. It says, never judge someone by the way he looks or a book by the way it's covered. For inside those tattered pages, there's a lot to be discovered. Yes. Amen. You got to get to know people. You got to find out what's the real deal. Because we got another saying that says, all that glitters is not gold. That's right. The meaning is that all things are not as good as they look. Uh -huh. come, on, come on, come on. Good appearance does not always equal good quality. Amen. Say that. That's a sea law moment. <laughs> Everything that is shiny or fancy does not mean that it is valuable. Say that. We just don't know. <laughs> That's so that you right there. So today we're going to look at a similar situation involving the church. And Mark 11, 12 through 14, we're going to deal with those verses first. Um, following in the footsteps of my passion. I'm trying to find more visuals because I'm a visual learner myself. And so I like to show pictures. What am I supposed to click right there? Oh, it went away back there. Okay, so that's Jesus in the middle. Those are the disciples. And that's a fig tree. Some of you may be familiar with this story. If not, we're going to enlighten you and, and, and broaden your, your um, biblical knowledge to that. That's right, baby. All right, mm -hmm. we're going to put the glasses. On the other side of it. Okay. All right. I can see. I just see Bella with my glasses. Oh, yes. There it is. All right. I'm reading from the New International Version, and you can keep your seat. Um, unless you just won't stand up. Have it away. I'm reading verses 12 through 14. The next day, as they were leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry. Seeing in the distance a fig tree and leaf, he went to find out if it had any fruit. When he reached it, he found nothing but leaves, because it was not the season for figs. Then he said to the tree, may no one ever eat fruit from you again. 
and the disciples. His disciples heard him say, all right, so oh, what's going on with Jesus? Mm. Going around cursing the trees like that. And he was hungry. There was a need. And the tree was not serving the purpose that it was created for. Let's look at the notes here. It says, many things can masquerade as the real thing, but fail upon closer inspection. The problem was, this, this fig tree was already blooming and had these pretty leaves, but didn't have any fruit. Come on. It was covering the ground, if you may. It was using up resources and not producing anything. Amen. Amen. Traveling grace and mercy be upon you. We love you. We see precisely the states not only of fault, failing to produce fruit, but of giving a fruitful impression and failing to bag it up. Hallelujah. And Lord God, we see you can't just be walking around looking pretty. You got to bag that stuff up. This is a tree that was supposed to have fruit. And as I was doing my research, praise God, as I was doing my research, found out that fig trees, fig trees take three years to actually get proper nutrition and come on, to start come producing. On. Yes. And so this one was kind of like mocking the ground and mocking the whole process. Like, I'm just going to be pretty. You know, we got some some Christians in church like that. They just come to church to look pretty. They're not of any help to anybody. Say that. They don't intend to be. They just came to look good and see who looked good with them. Yes. Their intention was not to come and get a word, but to spread word and spread gospel. Say that. So, we have some high stakes of failing to produce fruit. Because in this thing, Jesus, he cursed the tree right there instantly. And I was reading the other uh, text where it says that the disciples may not have noticed it until the next day because it was evening and they were getting ready to go. And they came back and like Peter said, look at that tree. I'm paraphrasing. <laughs> <laughs> look at that tree that Jesus spoke to yesterday. What was going on? So that's going to be next week's lesson. So y'all come back and y'all get part two. But this is the, the stakes, the high stakes of failing to produce. Mm -hmm. But you look like right. come on. you might be producing. Mm -hmm. I don't like that. This particular tree draws Jesus' attention because it already has a full covering of leaves. Even though it was not the season for it to be producing, but it looked like it was producing. It's an early bloomer. Its foliage signals that it should have early figs. Mm -hmm. You've been in church? Come on now. Mm. All your life. Come on. And you still can't get pregnant? Mm. Say that. Mm. My God. You've been in the church for 20 years and you still holding that grudge. Come on now. It ain't good fruit. Come on. That's fruit, all right, but yeah. it's not good fruit. Right. No, no. No, you've been in the church and trying to claim somebody else's wife. Say oh, that. Husband. Oh, husband. Come on now. That's not right. That's not good fruit. That's not what. No, 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 no. That's not right. That's that's just a pretty tree. Yeah. Come you on. in the church, but you're not of it. So you that. All right. <laughs> Move on. With that expectation, Jesus inspects the tree. I mean, if you walk up up on an orange tree, you expect to find oranges. You walk up on an apple tree, you expect to find apples. This is a fig tree. Jesus expect, is, expects to find figs. He is immediately disappointed. All right. Did y'all know we can disappoint God? Mm -hmm. Yes. He walk up on us and say, just like our children. I think most of us here have children or know someone who does. And when they do stuff like that, you'd be amazed that sometimes just the words, I am so disappointed in you, yes. will cut to the core of the heart quicker than any beat will. Yeah. Because when we have a good relationship with our children and they know what we expect of them and when they fall short, sometimes just, I'm so disappointed yes. in you. And just leave it there and walk mm -hmm. on and make them think about it. But Jesus was immediately disappointed. All leaves, no fruit. All expectation, no satisfaction. Mm. All talk, all show, no substance. Jesus was disappointed. Say, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You know, 
I can't help because you know I like music, but I remember Elvis Presley used to have the song, a little more uh, satisfaction. How do you say it? A little less conversation, a little more action. That's how the song went. A little less conversation, a little more action. All this conversation ain't satisfactory to me. <laughs> so stop all that talk and start doing something. Right. That's what the song basically said. It's for all talk, all show, no substance. My God. Mm. So in, shock, in a shocking term, this song seems like it's so out of character for Jesus. Jesus just curse the tree. Makes it wither from the roots. I mean, from the roots down. Tree all the way to the roots. Never to yield fruit again. This tree didn't have another chance. Mm. And think how many chances God has given us. Right. This tree didn't get another chance, y'all. Okay, so I'm, I'm a little concerned now. So what should we learn from this particular scene? Okay, number one, fruitlessness leads to judgment. You're not producing. Yeah. We ought to do something about you. That's what basically God said. Why are you not producing? Mm -hmm. Come on. What, what's, what's the problem? If we, when we have children, and if our children don't grow and develop like they should, we know there's a problem. Right. Yes, yes. So we as God's people, when we're not producing spiritual fruit, meat for repentance, meat to help others, to show our life, what is wrong? What is wrong? There will be judgment for fruitlessness. Let's see what else this says. We must yield spiritual fruit as God's covenant people. A lack of fruitfulness is a sign of God's curse for rebellion. Oh my. Wow. Rebellion? I ain't did nothing against God. You're not producing. You're sucking up all the oxygen. You're taking up all the resources. And you're not producing anything. You're not helping anybody. You're not trying to help anybody. You're not trying to walk right. you still cursing like crazy. Nothing has improved. Come on. Not to mention, you're not producing anything. Barren. Barren. Mmm. 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 My God. Okay, God's gonna, gonna judge that. And number two, you need to think about your own feelings. This, these are the warnings we need to think about. Fruitlessness leads to judgment, and you need to think about your own feelings. You know, we're so quick to point fingers at other people. Yes. Amen. Amen. Quick to point fingers, but you know that analogy. The one you point, you got three pointing back at you, so you need to be careful. Well, I see a lot of people start doing like this. <laughs> Right. You know, but you still need to do a self-evaluation, and that's what we need to do. During this holiday season, we want you to be happy. I ain't trying to bring you down, but I'm trying to make you realize that even in this holiday season, you need to keep your priorities straight. Yes. It's not about you getting everybody else a gift. It's about you celebrating the gift that God gave to us. Come on. And we know the history that Jesus probably was born in the summertime, y'all. Mm -hmm. But this is the time that we set aside in the year to celebrate the fact that he was born. Yes. And that God gave his best and greatest gift to mankind when he gave us Jesus. Yes. Amen. Amen. And so if you have the funds available, then you go ahead and you give some people some gifts if that's what you desire. But I guarantee you the best gift you can give to God and to others is the gift of your time. Mm -hmm. mm. Make time for the Lord. Yes. Make time for others who you know are by themselves. And nobody will be coming to seek them. Right. Make time. Time. Yeah, give them your talents. Give them your treasures. But make time. Yes. Think about your own figs. Amen. Amen. The fig tree cursing is not just about historical Israel. It's about us, y'all. It's us, too. It's about all the people of God throughout time. Boy, that's a lot of people. People of God throughout time. God created us for purpose, for purpose, with a purpose, and we're supposed to be living here on purpose mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. fulfill it. We're not just here to look cute. That's right. Say that. Okay? And that's what upset Jesus about that tree. So it's like, okay, not only are you looking cute, but you're looking cute before season. You know, that's why it's so important. The pastor always teaches us in the leadership that, you know, there has to be a season where you just go through training, where you have to... You have to be taught. Mm -hmm. We don't just put you out on Front Street right. when you come here. We need to get to know you. You need to get to know us. And we need to all be on one accord before we start standing you up as a representation of God 
first and this ministry. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, you gotta put your time in. Right. Okay? And it's and, and God is still expecting us to produce fruit, even during our training. Yes. Amen. Amen. This passage does not just remind us that a Christian by definition must produce spiritual fruit, even if only small early figs. Even if your fruit ain't but this big, you right. still supposed to be producing That's something. Right. It's also about the threat of and temptation toward false pretenses of fruit. Looking holy, <laughs> but not holy. Say that. Having a zeal of God according to righteousness, but you really don't know God. Right. Go to church every Sunday, and you are the meanest thing in work. Come on. Something is not Right. Say that. Right. Say With that. this picture. Okay? Don't look like. You know what I can really appreciate about some sinners is that you know where they stand. Mm -hmm. yes. They ain't trying to pretend. It's like, yeah, I know I need to come on in the church, but I'm doing this, that, and the other stuff. And you know why some of them don't want to come? Because of us. That's it. These pretty trees. Come on. We come to church and looking like we got it together, got our Bible in our Bible handbooks, and we got all our totes and stuff with Holy Bible and God is my strength and play the right songs, got license plates on our cards and everything. But then your life style. Ooh, come on say now. That. And when they look at us, and I say us because it's us, good, bad, and the ugly, it's all of us. When they look at us, they say, I don't want to be like this. Mm -mm. I'm already doing that, so why I got to come to church? Mm -hmm. I can do that out here. That's right. And I ain't got to come up and get up early in the morning trying to get no service and listen to y'all hypocrites. Mm. Bearing some fruit, but it's not good fruit. Now, this is worse than all. You ain't even bearing any fruit. Say no. that. At all. Okay? So the fig tree, like the bustling temple courts during Passover, was putting on a good show. Let's go back to the Word. Verse 15 through 17 is what we're talking about now. Look back in your Bible. It says, the fig tree, like the bustling temple courts during Passover, was putting on a good show. What are we talking about? Well, let's see. It says, verse 15, on reaching Jerusalem, Jesus entered the temple area and began driving out those who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves and would not allow anyone to carry merchandise through the temple courts. And as he taught them, he said, Is it not written, My house will be called a house of prayer for all nations? But you have made it a den of robbers. Mm -hmm. King James Version says a den of thieves. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, they had the show going on. Yeah, they, did. they had the show. And see, let, let me say this now before I forget it. Because I did the research on this too. God, Jesus was not upset about that happening. What he was upset about is that the way they were doing it. Their intentions. Mm -hmm. They were swindling the people. Most people who were coming to Jerusalem for the Passover, they didn't know about how their money was supposed to be exchanged. If you've ever been to another country that didn't use U.S. currency, you have to get your money exchanged for the money that's in that country. If you go to China, you have to do whatever it is they do. You have to do whatever they do in Mexico, pesos, I believe it is. And usually our money is worth more than what their money is in their country. But guess what the money changers were doing? They were hiking up the rates and robbing the people because they didn't know any better. It's not like today where we could get on our phone and say, what's the rate of the money in Mexico? How much can I get for a dollar? How many pesos can I get for a dollar? See, they can't trick us like that now. You got too many available resources. But back then, when you had traveled not an hour, not two hours, days uh -huh. to get to the temple, uh -huh. and you brought so much money with you so that you could pay the temple tax, and so that you could buy a dove or buy a calf or whatever you needed to make your sacrifice, 
Because you wanted to stay in right standing right. with God, right. and they swindling for you. Yeah. So once you get your money exchanged, you probably wouldn't get the right money amount back. And then once you went to buy your little dub, you probably yeah, yeah. charged right. double for the dub. Uh -huh. But you didn't know any better because you were a foreigner. Oh, and on top of that, while all this going on, people who want to come to church can't even get in. Said so the Gentiles couldn't even come in if they wanted to, because it was so much business happening in front of the church. Mm. God doesn't have a problem with the church doing things to help the poor, but He has a problem with the intentions okay. of the organization. Yeah. Stop trying to swindle the people. Come on now. Stop trying to swindle the people. Come on. That really hit me when I read this before, because I remember when we were growing up, and you know they always gave us something in school to say. It was something, saying It was always some candy, some candles, some popcorn, cookie dough. Some cookie dough all of, and you know the first people like me and my children, we didn't go out in the neighborhood. The only people yeah. they could hit were the church folk. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So then it's like, okay, well, no, don't ask them in the church sanctuary. No, that's just totally out of order. I said, ask them on the parking lot and stuff. You know, because I'm thinking about this. In the Bible, it's like, we don't want to get my God mad. But the understanding is, Jesus didn't have a problem. Because he understood that people probably weren't going to be able to bring all of that with them. His problem was, they were cheating the people. Mm -hmm. They were misleading them. They were deceptive. And they made this big business. Kind of like Wall Street in front of the temple. Mm -hmm. That's what was going on. And so it looked like everything was happening like it was supposed to. People buying them, getting their money changed, getting their little dubs, going in the temple, getting their stuff. It looked right, Come on now. but it wasn't right. It was fake. It was a show. They were putting on a good show, too. Come on. And that made it all the worse because it really looked like they knew what they were doing. Mm -hmm. It really looked like the, the worship leader really knew the Lord. Come on, you preaching. It really looked like the musicians really were into their playing. It really looked like the preacher knew the word he was preaching and living it. That's what it looked like until mm. church was over. Mm. Mm. That makes it all the worse because now you're confusing folks. Yes. It's one thing to lack fruit out of season, but it's another thing to lack it while pretending you have it. Mm. It's another thing to say, I love Jesus. But you can't even speak to your next door neighbor. It's, I love Jesus, but you cussing like crazy at work. I love Jesus. I love God. You love God? What's wrong with you? No, what's wrong with you? Yes. You don't even look like the love of God. What's really going what on? What is wrong with you? Yes, what's wrong with you? And no, if I were a Christian, I wouldn't want to be like you either. So let's be warned. Let us be warned. We tend to forget sometimes that God is watching us all the time. Yes. He got angels watching, but he can yes. see. He sees. Our personal lives can look like we're in leaf. Us. Our leaves may look like those of a super mom. I mean, we're getting it. We got it going on. We're a winner. We're the perfect little family. We come to church every Sunday. Everybody's well-groomed. Looking good. Nobody knows about the Hades that happened before we got to church. <laughs> but hey, we look good. We look good now. Now when we're on the way home, we're going to pick up right where we left off. And ain't nobody any better for it. Mm -hmm. An 18 Christian with an overstuffed schedule of ministry activity. Boy, I'm just working for the Lord. I'm working for the Lord. I'm working for the come Lord. When's the last time you spent time with him? Right. Come on now. I'm guilty. I, I just have to be. I just have to be so transparent. Sometimes you can get so busy with the work of God that you forget to spend time with God, and He will prefer your time with Him before you get all busy in yeah, this work. Yeah. Being busy doing this, busy doing that, busy doing that. And Pastor and I are really try to make it a point to not try to overcrowd our calendar. Amen. Because as much as we love you. And as much as we are a fellowship, everybody has other individual responsibilities that you got to do. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but washing happens on Saturday. So I, I would prefer not to have all my Saturdays at church. I need to wash clothes at the house. You understand what I'm saying? 
And I, I might be able to do it in a leisurely fashion, not trying to wake up and get it done, then I gotta get here, then I gotta get here, then I gotta get there. Oh, I got a husband too, by the way. Come on now. You know, my children grown, praise the Lord, they gone. But I got a husband. Amen. You got a wife. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you like to do things without y'all sometimes. Amen. <laughs> anyway, got to keep it balanced. But the root may be withered. You looking like you really working for the Lord, working for the Lord, working for the Lord, working for the Lord. But when you just a robot and you just showing up and you really not into it, as, as Bishop Jason said, you ain't all in. Come on. Then you need to re-examine because you... You ain't producing fruit. Amen. In fact, you might be a stumbling block at this point. Mm -hmm. There may be no fruit of holiness and no intimacy with God when your root is with. There will be no fruit of holiness, no intimacy with God. And what's worse, our leaves may even fool us. Mm -hmm. Now that's where it gets really dangerous. You think you're all right. Come on. And God's like, when well, last time we talked? When's the last time you really just pray? When's the last time you just worship me? Come on. You know, God is in, He created us for praise and worship. We were created yeah. for that purpose. If nothing, if you don't know what you're supposed yeah. to be, do, or have in your life, you are created to praise and worship God. That's part of your ultimate purpose. But He's like, you know, you don't, don't stop wearing them t shirts talking about you know me. Uh -huh. I don't know you. Mm -hmm. Stop telling people you're a member of so-and-so church. I don't know you. Oh, won't that be an awful day when we get to the throne of judgment and he says, depart from me for I know you not. It's like, wait a minute. We cast out devils in your name. We did all that. I don't know you. Yeah. We better get it right. Amen. But I, don't, mm -mm. I, can't, I can't let that happen. And our churches can do the same. A church's leaves may look impressive, Booming attendance, capital campaigns, clever pastors, impressive music. Now, you know, that would be the one to get me. So I love some good music ministry. <laughs> yes, yes. You know, I'm trying to overlook how sister so-and-so is looking, but I'm, let me just close my eyes. And I'm just going to listen to her voice because nobody's putting her in check. Come on. Anyway. <laughs> But what will the Lord find upon close inspection? Yes. You can fool some of the people some of the time. You can't fool the Lord at all. Mm -mm. Will he find only leaves? Or will he find figs too? And so that's the purpose of this message today is to ask yourself to be real with the Lord and see how when we still say yes and we done told the Lord yes to your will yes to your way yeah. you already said yes mm -hmm. <laughs> so now what did you just say yes to you've got to be producing yes Lord I want you to find figs on me if that's what I'm supposed to be producing oranges if I'm an orange tree apples if I'm an apple tree I need to be producing fruit. What's the fruit of the Spirit? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, meekness, goodness, kindness, faith, temperance. Got any fruit? As they say, got milk, got fruit? Right. Where's the fruit? Where's the fruit? Y'all remember that when it's commercial with that old one? Where's the beef? Where's the fruit? Jesus ain't playing. On this particular day, he was already upset with some things that were going on. Jesus is preparing to get ready to go to the cross. And if you notice, some of you may have it in your book, in your Bible, with subtitles. This was the second time Jesus had cleaned the temple. Yes. So you know he really wouldn't have. <laughs> Jesus cleanses the temple again. Because he had already done it before. And so they came right back to say, is that Jesus' character around here? We're going to be able to set up today. Is he just messed up everything for everybody the last time? This was the second time Jesus had to clean his temple. And so there he is. He running them off. Y'all see this woman over here? She looked like she really don't care for Jesus. Over here in this white room, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> with, her uh -huh, with her doves. With her doves. Uh-huh. 
And if Jesus, there was one of the pictures I chose, of course. There were some other pictures that were a little more polite, but I wasn't looking for polite. I needed to see Jesus with something in his hand running folks off. Think about it. They just try to think like Jesus. I'm getting ready to give my life to y'all and y'all up in here. Just selling stuff like, like this don't mean anything. All of this is supposed to be a, represent a representation of me. Right. And yeah. you have cheapened it. You have cheapened it. You have cheapened the plan of salvation. You have cheapened your walk with God. Because now it's just about looking good. Come on. But not being what he intended. Say that. Mm. So, in conclusion, <laughs> what kind of tree are you? This is a personal question. You don't have to answer it out loud. I did my own self inventory, and yes, there are areas I need to work on. Yes. I still need to work on some things, Sam. Mm -hmm. we, don't, we don't ever get it all right. My theory is, by the time you get it all right, that's when God's coming to get you. Yep. All that you can get right. What kind of tree are you? Are you bearing good fruit for the kingdom? Are you an early bloomer but you don't have any fruit? God doesn't. If it ain't your time, it ain't your time. Just sit yes. down and keep serving. Yes. Just go and do as they tell you to do. Even though you feel like you're being overlooked, mistreated, just go and clean those toilets in the bathroom. Yes. Go and wash those dishes in the kitchen. Yes. Go ahead and be the usher at the door. Go yes. ahead and serve the food in the kitchen. Yes. Do whatever you're asked to do because God is watching your service as well as others. And even if they don't promote you, God will. Yes. He will. But are you producing anything? Mm, come he on. can't bless what's not there. Amen. Are you bearing good fruit for the kingdom? Good fruit for the kingdom. Some of the fruit might be rotten. We need to get rid of it. Yeah. Get rid of the spoiled stuff. Are you playing church? Now, honestly, some of us, we too old to be playing church now. Either we need to go ahead and get it right or leave it alone. Stop straddling the fence. That's Are right. you playing church? Playing church is what children do. Yeah. And they mimic what they see you do. Yes. So at least if they don't play church, then you make sure they play it right. Can you kind of make sure that you ain't know, talking about Sister Bernice when you get to the house? Or Brother Thomas and everything he's doing out on the street, that's not for them to hear. If you're not going to pray about it, stop talking about it. Amen. What kind of fruit do you have? What kind of tree are you? When was the last time you checked yourself? It's a good time at the end of the year. You know, at the beginning of the year, people are going to make all kinds of New Year's resolutions they're going to bring. So why not just start looking at yourself in December? It's the end of the year. Or right. maybe around your birthday. Right. It's like, okay, where am I now? Do yeah. I have some goals for myself? Not just materialistic goals. What are my spiritual goals? Yeah. Where am I in my spirit? Have yeah. I grown any? Can I discern any better? Yeah. Have I read anything else other than maybe a line or two? Come what on. am I doing? Do I have any fruit? Yes. I don't know why this just came to me, but you know, it was always something at Christmas time that my dad and my mom always made sure that we got a few toys, but you always got a bag of fruit and nuts. Uh -huh. mm. You always got some fruit. All right. You always got some fruit. Yes. And candy and nuts. Because a lot of times that was all they had to give their children. Right. That's all they got. You always need to have some fruit, people. Yes. You always should have some fruit. Whether it's a fig or a big old grapefruit, you need to have some fruit. Yes. God is only interested in genuine and sincere worship, praise, and service. Yes. He ain't got time for this other mess. Come, Come on. on. He ain't got time for all your campaigns or your elections or your special days. Not that I'm knocking special days. Please don't send us emails about this. I'm not knocking special days. But what's the purpose? Come on. Yes. What's the purpose? Because see, I've got today's now. It's like, just tell me what you want now. Donate it so I can go home. 
I ain't got to come here and spend two more hours. You understand what I'm saying, Brother Antonio? I would like to be at home doing something I want to do. Not that I don't mind worshiping the Lord with you, but when I don't really put in, right. I don't put in. So I'm good. Why I got to come back at 2 o'clock? <laughs> Genuine and sincere worship, praise, and service. Oh, Lord, the Lord just dropped in my spirit. If we tithe like we should, we wouldn't have to have so many special days. Mm -hmm. Come on. That's whole and several different That's offerings. You say, what you say, Pastor? Several, several different, different offerings. We're going to have an offering for this, and an offering for that, and an offering for this over here. And now at the end of the service, we're going to raise our offering. Well, you just don't get that out of the banana. Mm -hmm. I gave my money. Didn't everybody else get that money? Oh, you, oh, okay. What are you talking to y'all? We didn't meet our goal, <laughs> so we need another We didn't meet our goal. Mm -hmm. well, who made that goal? Who started that tomorrow anyway? <laughs> so, come on, y'all. Don't get me started. Genuine faith. Mm -hmm means bearing fruit for God's kingdom. Yeah. Genuine faith means bearing fruit for God's kingdom. It's all in the working of your faith. And we're going to even talk about this more next week because he went into talking about how faith could move mountains in another chapter. So in this chapter in Mark 11, he talks about how Jesus was saying, stop just looking like you got it together. It's not about the size. Oh, I love this. W-O-J-G, got to give them credit, 94.7, they always say it. It's not the size, but the ability to get the job done. Mm. It's not the size, but the ability to get the job done. If you got 50,000 members and only 10,000 are tithing, you didn't get the job done. No. But if you got 30 members and 30 tithers, and every time you show up, they all try to show up and do something, you got almost 100% effort. That's some, that's some good fruit. Amen. Amen. Genuine faith means bearing fruit for God's kingdom. Lord, help us to be more than just a pretty tree. This is my final slide for you today. You can stand to your feet. As I told you, I like to follow in the footsteps of my pastor. I'm going to give you this visual here from Matthew 7, 19. 7, 19. Every tree that does not bear good fruit. Come on. It's cut down and thrown into the fire. That's the word. And he's right there. Matthew 7, 19. Every retreat, not some, every retreat that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. You can, I want to play my worship is for real. This seems to be the theme song. We don't want to be those type of people. Because you know God, Jesus had pity on the tree. He just said, curse it be the tree. He just let it wither up right there. Right here, you get thrown to the fire. Yeah, Hell down. fire. Well, cut. We cut down and thrown to the fire. You ain't going to get a chance. Let's ask God now to help us be more than just pretty leaves. More than just pretty tree. Let's not worry so much about what others say, right. but what God says about us. Yes. Work on your relationship with Him. Work on your relationship with Him. It's probably on the Amazon. It's on Amazon. Yes, we have to work on our relationship with the Lord. So we will get be in good standing with him. Yes, indeed. My worship is for real. I love this song because it says, you don't know my story. You don't know what I had to go through to get here. Right. Don't try to figure it out. I can't even figure it out myself. Right. But my, I can tell you this, my worship is for real because I've gone through too much mm -hmm. not to worship him. I've gone through too much not to worship him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Ain't that the spot to win? You can't find someone in the room. My worship is for real. Amen. Amen. You know it's only because I've been walking in. Amen. But right now, Father God, we come right now in the name of Jesus. We just thank you, Lord God, that you give us another chance to get better for you. 
that we're walking with you, Lord God, but we know we can do better. Yes. And Lord, we want to please you. We don't want you to be disappointed when you look down upon us and find us not being productive. We need your help. And you said that if we would ask, we would receive, if we would seek, we would find, if we knock, the door would be open to us. So we ask right now, help us to be productive. Help us to bear good fruit. We don't know how to do it without you. Speak to us through your words. Speak to us through songs, hymns, and spiritual songs. Show us how to do this, Lord God. We seek you right now. We seek you early in the morning. We seek you all day long, Lord God. We cannot do this without you. And you never said that we should. For you said that we would be able to do all things through you. Because you would strengthen us. Yeah. So we knock. And we're going to keep on knocking, Lord God. Until the door is open. And we thank you, Lord God. That every day with you, Jesus, is sweeter than the day before. Yeah. We thank you, Lord God, that every day makes me love you more and more. Hallelujah. And when friends forsake me, Jesus, you open up a door. Because every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. We stand on your word. 